Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Neve Cavan and I'm from the University of Limerick and I am joined by one of my wonderful colleagues and our student Rowan Fitzpatrick. Rowan, do you want to say hello to everybody? Yeah, hi everyone. Happy to be here. Fantastic. So myself and Rowan are going to talk a little bit about ex um, internships and work experience and different things while studying in Ireland. And we're going to use the University of Limerick as a case study because we've got this amazing embedded a cooperative education or internship program in all of our undergraduate degrees at the University of Limerick. And it's been there since the very founding start of the university. So it's it's what we pride ourselves on is having that cooperative education piece. So I'm going to go through a couple of slides and then I'm going to hand it over to Rowan and Rowan's going to talk about her experience. And um, she's just back from co-op. She was away there last year and um, she did it in central Michigan. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave the rest of it up to Rowan when I hand it over to her. So just a little bit about Limerick and Ireland, just to give you an idea where we're based. So we're on the southwest coast of Ireland. We're about two hours from Dublin. You can see there, seven hours by plane to New York, 13 and a half to San Francisco, a, about eight hours from Toronto, and about 13 and a half, 14 hours from Vancouver. So we're really nice and central when it comes to getting around Ireland as well in Limerick, um, just to give you a good idea. But the reason why I'm showing you this slide is a lot of massive multinational companies fly into Shannon Airport with their cargo planes and their business planes and everything like that because it's quite an industrial um tech multi tech uh, tech companies um pharmaceutical companies um financial companies are all based around that region so really really important airport for Ireland when it comes to multinational companies um investment and everything like that and we're only 30 minutes from it uh, based in Limerick city so just in case you know you haven't heard enough about us in Ireland, um, we are one of the most safe and affordable and quality education systems in the world. So our graduates are redeemed to be some of the top graduates in the whole globe. And the reason for that is the standard of the education that we give at our undergraduate levels. Um, so you're not just getting really good um, knowledge when it comes to your general academic studies, you're getting hand-on experience in the workplace, either in labs or in financial districts, or if you're teaching out in the teaching world, or like Rowan, who's a sports science student, she was in the sports labs um, as a sports technician um, in central Michigan. So, you know, you're getting real hands-on experience, which then brings you out into the workplace and makes you more um, employable to the to the you know big multinationals and everything like that another great thing is you get a one-year stay back visa at undergraduate level and if you do a master's with us you get a two-year stay back visa and um, there's over 1,500 multinational companies based in based their european headquarters in ireland amazing we're english speaking so same as yourselves and we're very multicultural and family orientated and very similar to north america for canadians and u.s students so just a really quick then touch on the university and the the campus and about the the education and what we're looking at here mainly is the graduate employability rate 97 percent of graduates get jobs and that would be quite a we're one of the top um graduate employability rates in the country for the university of limerick but that'd be quite standard across a lot of the universities we would all be well up into the 90s and um, when it comes to education like this now undergraduate programs so the reason why i'm talking about the structure of them is because all undergraduate degrees in ireland are four years in duration um but at the university of limerick you have that six to eight months generally eight months work placement in any area of study. So that's in all the undergraduate programs. And then for some students, they can go on away in Erasmus, which would be like a study abroad or an exchange experience as part of their undergraduate degree. So you could imagine the amount of experience you're getting within eight months. And the best thing about it is, is that it is generally paid placement unless you go and organize it yourself. OK, and Rowan's going to talk about that when, when I hand, hand it over to her. But the cooperative education program and how it's structured and how it works at undergraduate level. So you could imagine, before I talk about the program, um, myself and Rowan going for a job in sports science and Rowan has eight months work experience already underneath her belt. So she understands what it's like to be in the workplace. 
well, I've done, you know, two weeks there, two weeks here, you know, probably have six weeks overall work experience. The employer is going to look at our CVs once we graduate and go, I'm going to take Rowan because she has valuable experience. She's eight months. She knows how the lab works. She knows how the etiquette in the office is compared to me, who's got about six months or six weeks work experience. So it's going to take longer to train me into the job than it would to train Rowan into the job. And that's the idea behind cooperative education programs is to give you that real valuable experience. And you can see there, like uh, the program at the university has significant benefits to increase uh, collaborations with employers. So a lot of students will actually have offers from the place they went on their co-op for a job after they graduate, especially our engineers. We can't seem to hold on to the engineers. They want to leave once they're on their co-op because there's such a demand for engineers at the moment. On average, the university would send 2000 students across like over 600 different employers around the world. OK, so it's not just in Ireland. You can do it in Ireland. You can go back to the United States. You can go back to Canada. You could go to Japan if you're doing languages. But it is a crucial part of the program and it is managed by the co-op um, office. So in some cases, when you organize your own, you won't have as much um, connection with the co-op uh, co office. Um, but you will have to submit reports and different things like that that will link with your course leader. And placements generally consist of six to eight months which is really, really important. So the benefits of going and doing a cooperative education program is it gives you cost effective on staff resources. So what it means is that the employer is getting a really good student and saves them long term costs. And that means they will give you new projects and keep you busy. And because they're paying you, you're going to be counted as an employee. You get to source, learn different skills. You get an insight into best practice. You have the opportunity to build on, um, build on different things with the employer as well. Uh, you get to look at building your skill network. Work ready students will, you know, access in the in the sector. So this is what employers are looking for. And it's really important for you guys to know that this is the kind of stuff that you'll be coming away from as well and getting getting the opportunity to do. So when you look at the cooperative education programs, the whole benefit of it is, is that you're coming out and you have that real life experience. And when you graduate, then you are going into working in Ireland. So you get up to 20 hours a week while you're studying and then 40 hours while you're outside of that to work. So what a lot of students do when they come off their co-op or internships they end up working part time for the company. And once again, the engineers and the scientists all end up doing it because there's such a demand. Um, you get paid minimum wage while here in Ireland. So that's 10 euro, 20 cent now instead of 10, 10. So it's gone up. Um, it'll probably go up even more again in the budget this month. And then there's loads of part time jobs and everything like that. But working in Ireland really is a big, big thing. Um, and when you're on your co-op, you don't have to worry about your work visas or anything like that because it's an automatic thing. Even though technically you're in your academic semester, it's part of the program. So therefore you have to do it. And then after you graduate, you undergraduate students will get a one year stay back visa. So you can live and work in Ireland and the careers offices in all the universities are fantastic. They'll offer one on one counseling. They'll do uh, CV workshops. They'll do research they'll do loads of different things with you um when it comes to searching for jobs matching you with jobs you'll get mock interviews everything like that and an average salary for a graduate out of ireland is about thirty-five thousand five hundred, 500 as you can see there um and then if you want to go on after that what you do is that you and your employer would apply for a, a stay back visa or a work permit so here is a wonderful slide of all the different companies that we work with um, across the region um, to hire our students. So as you can see there, we have Jaguar, Land Rover, Dell, um, Aon, Apple, Analog Devices. Like there's a huge amount of multinational companies that not just hire our co-op students, but also take them back and hire them as full-time students. And I know some students that have, especially US and Canadian students that have gone to work for these companies only back in the US. Um, for example, Walker, one of our US students from Texas, he's gone back to work for Apple in Texas. 
Um, you know, so there's loads of different opportunities there. And it really does open up the door when you have that co-op experience. Because as I said, you get that opportunity to to really know what it is to work in the industry and to learn the trade while compared to somebody who hasn't had that that opportunity. So I'm going to say thank you and I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand it over to Rowan because you, that's who you really want to hear from and um, hear about her experience. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through my experience from the very beginning of my third year, which is when my co-op was supposed to start. Um, it can start in second year or third year, depending on what your degree is. Since mine was in sport and exercise sciences. They started us with meetings with the co-op office in September of our third year, which was last year at this time for me. So they just started with what co-op is, what Neve explained, what options we might have, and how to construct a proper CV. Because the way we get our jobs is we circulate our CV or our resume around to different employers all over the world or wherever we might want to apply. Um, so we started with that and CV, we went through how our classes has prepared us for the work. For example, like my lab work, lab safety is a huge deal. So I already had that under my belt. We also add teamwork skills, problem solving, communication, initiative projects. Those are all things we list on our CV. And the co-op office explains that as a group to all the um, courses and individually in your courses. So it's very helpful. They're, they're great at answering questions. They have specific officers, depending on what your program is. And then after we have our CV com completed, we choose where we want to apply off of the list that they give us for that year. That could be based on a region, based on a specific company, or based on somewhere you just think you really want to go and you have a good chance of getting a spot there. Um, and then in November, we get our interviews based on our employers or whether they wanted to take us on possibly based on our CV and our transcript. And the thing is we have to take our first offer. So if you get an interview like I did um, and the first place that interviews you accepts you, you don't have to do any more interviews. They, you automatically get accepted and have to go there. Like my first place was in Canada. I was going to be at a performance center, but then COVID went down. So I had to actually sort my own, so I went through both processes. It's actually pretty fun. <laughs> um, I went back to my hometown. I had to contact someone at a local university who I had known previously and said would take me on as a student, as a lab researcher. It was actually a great experience. I just had the employer write up a contract for me, what I was going to be doing, if I was going to be paid. I wasn't for this just because I had to sort my own and sports science jobs generally aren't paid. Um, what else? We, yep, self-organized, player wrote up the contract, just sent it off to my co-op officer. They had it certified, they reached out, said, is this a real, real placement? And that was pretty much it. All I had to deal with the co-op office, office from there. And then in January, I started my eight month placement. It was great. It, Depends on where you go, so I won't go too much into what my duties were since I was in sports science in a lab. But I will say that anyone, anywhere where you get employed, they really want you to succeed. You're not just going to be a minion or a lackey. They want you, <laughs> yeah, they want you to learn while you're there. Because as Neve said, they might want to employ you later if you're a good worker and you actually know what you're doing. In my co op, I was lucky enough to get published on a research paper, which doesn't happen very often. So I was very, very grateful for that. Got a lot of work experience, um, experience working with clinical populations. It really helped explain what I wanted to do in the future. It cleared up a lot of paths as it did for a lot of my course mates who went into co-op co not knowing what they wanted to do later. A lot of them got offers for PhDs coming out of co-op as well, not just work. So that was something quite amazing I, 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 I can appreciate. And then during all of this, I had to keep track of what I was doing, my duties, um, my relationships with the coworkers, and I had to write it all down in a co-op report at the end of the year. And in this report, it was 
responsibilities, the structure of the organization, a few pages on what you learned, and an employer evaluation. And then you turn that into the co-op office at the end of the year, and they it's pretty much pass or fail. Most people pass because it's <laughs> as long as you do it, you pretty much pass. It's a great experience. Um, and it adds a lot onto your CV at the end, which looks great and really puts you above other people when you come to apply for your job after you graduate or if you're applying for further education, which I would like to do. And it gives you a lot of experience. And depending on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> depending on what you want to do later, it, it really helps. So Rowan, I have a question for you just to jump yes. in. Um, Because what you said there is really interesting. How did it help you decide what you wanted to do next? How did you know you wanted to go on to further education? Do you want to go into like, do you want to go on and do a PhD in it since you talked about being published? Is that how it, you know, it helped you decide? Or could you see yourself in the lab um, for a little while before going on to do a PhD and doing some practical work? Or what, what, what way did it help you decide your future? Well, the people who I worked under were faculty and academics in exercise, clinical exercise science, and they really helped talk me through it. Like, what do you want to do? We can get you involved with whatever you're interested in at the moment. See if it's something that you might want to continue with. And they really helped me with that. I wanted to go into anatomy, so they let me sit on some anatomy labs and some dissections, which was really cool. And that helped me. And they, um, they helped me with some applications for further education. They talked me through what a PhD process might be like if I wanted to do a master's beforehand. Um, yeah, they just... They're really good. The people you work with really help. That's fantastic. Does anybody have any questions for Rowan as we're, as we're chatting? Pop them into the discussion and we can we can chat about different elements of it. So next thing I ha- question I have for you because you talk about the two different processes and how you were meant to go to a place that the co-op office had found for you, how did you find that process dealing with them versus, oh my God, I'm now, COVID hits and everything's shut down. Um, was it a difficult process or did you find the university was good at helping, you know, that your your academics were very understanding on the, the switch of placements and stuff? They were very understanding just because it happened all over the university and they knew everyone was going to get shut down because some placements were as far away as Australia and that wasn't going to happen with some students. So as soon as I said, hey, I think I want to sort my own placement just in case this one might get canceled, they said that's completely fine. Fill out the paperwork. We'll get it set for you. Very good. Very good. Very good. A question comes in from Zach. Does the co-op program apply for history students? Yes, Zach, it does indeed. So it, it applies for any program you're studying at the University of Limerick. So for us, it's in all of our undergraduate programs. So for history students, they it'll vary depending on what, it, what industry you want to get into. So if it's history teaching, you might go into like shadowing teachers. If it is more like historical um, history, like um, in libraries, Um, I know that some of the history students go into the archives at the university or into specialized libraries around Ireland and stuff like that. Or they might go into museums and do a lot of history restoration on um, different documents and and work like that. Or, you know, it really does vary. But yeah, history students do go out and go up. And in some of the cases, some of the history students will actually go into some of the cultural centers um, around Ireland and do a lot around history. and kind of more cultural history and getting like tourism bits and different things like that. Um, I know that one of our history students once went to the history program or the the cultural center down near the Stole and worked with tourism for the summer and talked about the history of the village and you know the area and everything like that. So it really does vary on the, on that side of the house for history. If anybody has any questions, keep popping them into the discussion bar, guys, because it's really, you know, kind of an open, open plan um, setting and an open kind of Q&A as well. So happy to answer some of them. Um, what a lot of students say to me once they've completed their co-op program, and Rowan, you can agree or not agree, um, mm-hmm. is that they found it so beneficial to know what it was like to work in that industry. And some students have come back and said, yeah, that's absolutely where I want to go. Or others have said, 
no, actually, I'm going to switch my focus and do a master's in this area to go down this route instead. Um, especially a lot of the business students, they'll come back after being on co-op and go, actually, do you know what? I'm going to go on and do a master's in, in this element. Did you find that, that, you know, you may have thought you were going to go one way and now you've ended up in the academic route or were you always going the academic route? I mostly stayed on the route I was, I was thinking of, but a few of my course mates, they got placements at a physiotherapy office, office and both of them were like, oh my gosh, I never knew this would be so amazing. I want to do a master in this. So they're continuing on that route now and they would never have known about it if it weren't for co-op. Ah, that's interesting. That is really, yeah. really interesting. Okay. And how did you find um, coming back after being away in the workplace? Do you miss that interaction or are you, and are you excited now to get your final year over? And then my last question on top of that is, has it refocused you for your final year to know exactly what you want to do? I do miss it, actually. I was, even though I was still based at a university, I was doing a lot more hands-on work. Um, and it it's made me excited for my final year just because my final year project, this is, which is kind of like our mini thesis, it really helped clear up what I wanted to do for that. And what I selected is what I'm, what I pretty much did on co-op. And I know I'm going to be confident for it. I'm going to be um, prepared on what I'm going to learn and it'll prepare me to get a good grade. Nice. Nice. I love that word confidence. So when you speak about confidence after you, before you went into your um, co-op program versus coming out of it, do you find that you're uh, like you, you say you're confident, but just to, so that people on the, on the seminar know, like, do you like, has it really grown your confidence to know I'm able to do this? I can, you know, I can see myself in this position in 10 years time compared to, you know, when you don't have that, that real life experience to, to compare it to. Oh yeah, completely. Like I had to do consent forms with individuals coming in. Um, I had to act in an authoritative role. Like obviously I still get nervous with things like this in public speaking, but in the route I want to go down, it has definitely enhanced my confidence that's brilliant that's brilliant and then one of the i'm just going to open up the discussion bar um everybody on the call please put things into the discussion bar like we're happy to answer any questions that you have um then my next thing how does your classmates find it versus you know have you all come back with that really positive experience and you say some of them are thinking now going into the physiotherapy group have some of them thought about coming out of sports science completely because they did just said okay no this actually isn't for me even though i love the program but i'm going to switch focus completely because sports science into physio is kind of quite similar of a of a health science area has anyone gone okay no i'm actually going to go and do a master's in business to go into the management side of a house after being on co-op or anything do you, do you know like have you guys have that chat, chat yet as a class not that I've heard. There was one student who actually just dropped out to do construction in the middle of his co-op. So I don't know what happened there. Okay. But everyone else seems to be doing great. Okay. And they've got the PhD opportunities that they got through co-op and everyone's super excited. So. I bet you that's because there's such a demand on engineering in that area. Um, I told you we can't keep our tergers. They all want to leave after they come after they do their co-op. They're all like, we have full-time jobs. Why do we need our bachelor's degree? Because there's such a demand for that that industry in Ireland at the moment. Um, question is, is the co-op only available at the University of Limerick? So there is other universities in Ireland, um, as I said at the start, that do offer the the internship type program. Um, we're the only ones that offer it across everything. It's offered in every undergraduate program. So you can't, you can't, not do it um at the university of limerick it's really 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 embedded into the in the foundations of the the whole university we're very much about teaching and you know growing our students in the most up-to-date research and um work related topics as possible so the co-op program is really really important to get you that most up-to-date knowledge in the industry and also the fact that we work so closely with the companies they embed like help us with our curriculum and our teaching and everything like that so that you guys are learning exactly what's going on in the industry and not something that's five years past and um, which is really really important and a lot of Irish universities teach like that as well as the University of Limerick and um, it's all about research-based teaching so that you're getting the most up-to-date current teaching methods and what's actually happening in industry 
um, which is so important. Is it difficult to keep up the co-op work and other work at school or is school work cut down during that time? Rowan, I'll let you answer that for Molly. Okay. During that time, we were just on co-op, so we don't really have any school work. Um, other than the co-op report, we have to write up at the end, which is around 10 pages long. But as long as you keep like notes while you're going through your co-op, it should be easy to do in the last few weeks. Perfect. Did you keep a diary? Not a proper diary, no. No? I know some students keep a really good diary um, so that their co-op report at the end is actually quite quite easy for them um on the co-op report just so that people have an idea because it is like once again based on real life reporting so these are type of reports that you could be asked for in in job related you know did you structure it the same way like what way did you structure the report um was it very much like a, a thesis or was it more like a um you know like a, an actual report that you'd hand over when you were working um it was it had a a a rubric we had to follow so it was more like you know like a lab document they go methods abstract discussion kind of things like that so you just fill it in as you go pretty much and then for like responsibilities in my case i split it up by research project i would have case study all my duties for that s study all my duties for that cool really good Okay, so I know that we're not far off um, finishing. So I'm going to ask anybody if they have any, you know, questions generally about studying in Ireland for Rowan while we have her, because Rowan's currently in fourth year and has done four years in undergrad here in Ireland. Um, so if you've got general questions, you know, around what it was like applying, you know, how you found, you know, um, getting to Ireland, what was the, you know, the big factor about coming to Ireland. So, oh, here's one comment coming in. How long is each school year is staying in Ireland between school years to work possible? Uh, yes, that is possible. You can stay for the summer. Um, so in Rowan's case, actually, Rowan was here during the first initial COVID lockdown in, yes. in, in March 2020. So Rowan actually stayed for a good chunk of the summer before it was safe for her to fly home. Um, and you can work. Rowan, have you ever stayed for the summer months, like apart from the COVID year? Or do you, you normally always go home? I normally go home. Yeah. 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 But you, but you can stay and you can work. Um, oh, you can. You can even stay on campus. You, the accommodation offers summer accommodation. It's very convenient. Hmm. Actually, and you might tell them a little bit about the accommodation while we're waiting for more questions to come in. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've lived on on campus all four years just because it's most convenient for me. And um, it's great. Like the, the villages, there's different villages all around campus think they just split it up until some campuses are first years only um sorry reading the comments um, <laughs> yeah, I, i'll let you keep going will we jump in i'd love to know if rowan had visited school in ireland before applying and accepting. i had <laughs> i had actually my i think it was my junior year i came over i did trinity i didn't go down to cork i did trinity dcu and limerick and it was actually Neve who convinced my mother to allow me to come study at UL, which is what I wanted to do. It was my junior year of high school. I actually still remember the day Rowan came with her dad and her mom. Um, we had a really cool tour. Um, how do students' visa work and what's the process like um, acquiring one? Um, Julia, that's a really good question. So the student visa works is um, coming from the US or from Canada. You don't require a visa to get into Ireland. So you just book a flight and come over and you have all your documentations that we talk you through at the international office. And then when you get over here, you have to register with our immigration services. In first year, the universe, the international office will set that up for you. And then in second, third and fourth year, you've got a bit of, you know, you know, adulting to do and you have to organize it yourself. But we give you the email address and Rowan's done it for the last four years. And then as part of that student immigration card, so your IRP card, you have an automatic work permit, okay? So then you're able to go and get a PPS number from there. And Rowan, you might actually talk them talk about that that process because you've recently just done it. Uh, Rowan yeah. has a part-time job for fourth year. If you want to tell them a little bit about that and how that works, just so that they understand that how things work in Ireland. Yeah, I'll do the PPS number first. So that is, um, I pretty much just put in all my my documents, my ID, 
my IRP card, address, things like that. And then they send back a number if you qualify, um, if your employer says that they're going to take you on and stuff like that. And my position here at UL is the UL cultural advice, U.S. cultural advisor. It's a tongue twister for me. I don't know why. But I work with the study abroad students and any first years coming in from abroad. And it's a great opportunity. I get to interact with everyone, show them around, show them my story, how I, I adjusted, how I'm loving it. <laughs> so hopefully that helps, Julia. Yeah. Um, keep the questions coming in, everybody, because we are the last seminar, so they might not kick us out as quickly as the rest of them. So we might have a little bit more time to chat. Um, so one, one, one thing I'm going to going to say is you know it's important to you know get out there and get involved and so if you're in junior year or senior year this is like a really really important stage for you guys when you're deciding what to do and the best bit of advice I can give you and then Rowan you might give them a bit of advice about applying to colleges um, and I, I think I even said it to Rowan when she was applying four years ago was make sure that you know you're you're really happy with what you're doing okay because There'll be loads of different universities that you'll meet. And there, you know, there's so many of us Irish universities as well. It's really important that you get a feel for the program, what the university is like, and that you can really see yourself there. Okay. And it's not about where your best friend is going, or it's not about, you know, how great that the rep sold you the, the the course of the program. It's about where you can really see yourself. And that's really going to make a difference to you developing as a young adult. And when you get to that university, get involved, okay? Get involved in whatever you possibly can, whether it's clubs or societies or, you know, multiple different things. Rowan, you might talk about some of the stuff that you've done, you know, with your classmates or, you know, what you've gone to see, you know, friends you've made, um, like the McErnies, um, out in Ennis, nice. um, stuff like that. But really do, you know, find the place that you can really see yourself in because that's where you're going to excel academically. And then to grow as a young person and develop as a young adult, get involved in whatever you can when you're on that campus. Rowan, what advice would you give them? Yeah, definitely go where you see yourself fitting in at home. Don't go to what you think is the best university or it has the best program. Feel, go where you think you have a fit and where you think you will succeed. I mean, that's what I did and I'm succeeding happily. I'm enjoying myself. I'm loving every minute of it. Wouldn't change a thing. Brilliant. Okay, do we have any anything else in the discussion bar? Is anybody else coming in with questions? No, and I don't know how much time we have left. I don't, I, I'm not sure. Okay. No other questions. Oh, there we go. Hey, guys, you can keep on talking. There's, there's no rush. You are the last seminar. Okay. I, I could talk all day. I've got my cup of tea here beside <laughs> me, everybody. I am all set, like a good Irish person. I'm awake for the night with a cup of tea, so happy to answer any questions around, you know, and Rowan, Rowan will stay on with us as well around, you know, Absolutely. studying in Ireland, jobs in Ireland, internship programs, companies, you know, even as bizarre as clubs and societies or accommodation or just general living costs, anything at all. So pop it into the discussion if there is. Oh, here we go. Do you have links where I can see... Now, as a senior, psychology is my interest. Brenda, yes. Um, so psychology is your interest. There's a load of different universities around. We offer it at two different area or three different types of psychology programs at the University of Limerick. We have a BA in psychology, a BS in psychology, and a BS in psychology and uh, sociology. So if you're really interested, what I would say is drop by the booth. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my email address into the discussion bar as well. So if anyone does have any questions around programs whether it's the university or whether it's another university I can put you in touch with my colleagues um in the other universities or if you've got questions like that around the psychology programs I can email them to you and send you the links out um or if it's a different psychology program happy once again to put you in touch with my colleagues or if you wanted to chat to the education in Ireland guys um like Sarah and Lucia and Sue I can put you in touch with them as well um but I can send you over the links if you want to shoot me an email um rather than throwing them into the discussion Ron, how about this? Tell them what your plans are next, because I don't even know this, because I know we haven't had this conversation <laughs> yet. Do you plan on going back to the US now that you've got your bachelor's degree, 
or are you going to stay in Ireland or are you going to go further afield? Or have you even I am, decided yet? <laughs> I am actually currently applying to three master's programs in Scotland. Nice. Yeah, so I've got one at a different university each. So three universities, been in touch with their faculty, going to do some campus visits in January with my family. Be fun trip. Yes. And then a few months after that, it'll decide where I go. Very good. Very good. And just for everybody on the call, the reason why I asked that is to highlight that a bachelor's degree in Ireland can go anywhere in the world. Okay, they're all internationally recognized. So Rowan could go back to the United States and go into a graduate program there or to Scotland or stay in Ireland. And the same as if Rowan was to go back and start working. Our degrees are internationally recognized. So it's the same equivalence as getting a bachelor's degree in the US for an employer or anything like that. And because our degrees are so highly ranked as well, um, it does open doors and opportunities around the world. Yeah, here comes another comment. Do most universities in Ireland accept IB diplomas? Yes, they do indeed. So um, all the Irish universities will accept IB diplomas, A-levels, um, SETs or ACTs, and then a number of us, if not all of us, um, have gone to what we refer to a test flexible system instead of test optional. So what test flexible means is that some programs may still require SATs or ACTs, but other programs are just looking at high school grades with APs and different things like that. But you'd have to contact the individual Irish institutions to find out which of the programs they have are test flexible. We don't use the word test optional in Ireland, unfortunately, but it is quite similar to that kind of kind of a setup. Is it typically go straight into master's after a bachelor's degree is to be most employable? It is dependable on the field. Um, no, it's very dependable on what you study. You don't have to go into a master's. It's just something very commonly done in Ireland. With, Rowan, do you notice that, that a lot of students go straight from undergrad into master's in Ireland compared to the United States? Have you seen that with the students ahead of you guys? Or Actually, I feel like it's the reverse, at least with my program, because okay. my program, it, you get a lot of cert certifications and you're work ready pretty fast for like if, if you want to go into strength and conditioning. But most people only go on to a master's in my program if they're planning on doing physical th physiotherapy. Ah, so. There you go. There you go. Well, the program it's, that I've done. It does prevent, depend. <laughs> it does depend a little bit. But uh, for the program I did, I could have gone straight into doing um, law exams or tax exams. But I was changing careers and I ended up doing a master's. Um, but there is a huge focus on that in Ireland as well, you know, just to get as much education as you can. Um, but you don't have to go straight into a master's. So there you go. Um, if you were to transfer from another university as a year three, would you get co-op program work? Zach, that is a really good question. A, normally at the university, what would happen is that you'd actually transfer back into year two instead of year three, because um, some of you may not know this, but the Irish education system is a little bit different compared to the United States education system, where we don't offer general education subjects or courses. We call them modules or subjects in Ireland, while well, you refer to them as courses. So in Ireland, you, when you go into an undergraduate degree, you're generally going into a field of study. Um, so therefore, you're getting more knowledge in that field instead of being caught for the first two years doing courses or subjects that aren't really relevant to the industry or the work area that you want to get into. So this is how we're able to, one, apply the co-op program and two, give our students as like in-depth knowledge into the subject area that they want to get into because they're no longer doing English 101 or Science 101 depending like so Rowan's in sports science so Rowan you're obviously not doing history or geography or any of those type of programs are you no no while everything applies yeah everything applies to what Rowan wants to study so maths you know science areas uh, biology um anatomy all related to the body and to, you know, strength and conditioning and physiotherapy and health sciences and science-based courses. And um, probably do chemistry and physics a little bit as well, did you? First year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, general science-based, but not, you know, geography or history 101 or English 101 or French 101. You don't have to meet those general education. So therefore, when you're transferring across, 
it'll all depend on how much of the credits you have ticked off the box in year one and year two of our degrees. And generally, a third year student has only done two years worth of our, our, our workload. So therefore, you go back into year two and then you can avail of the uh, co-op in year three. How common is a bachelor's degree that takes three years rather than four years in Ireland? Is there more dependent on a degree or the university? Okay. Um, and if any of my Irish colleagues are on this call, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but 99.9% .9 of the degrees in Ireland are four years in duration. Okay. I think I only know like two off the top of my head in other Irish institutions that are three years in duration. Um, but normally it would be four years um, and that would be standard practice in Ireland compared to the UK. The UK is generally three years. We would be four years. I think Scotland is four years as well. Um, and one other person I think is typing and going to help answer this as well. Um, but no, typically four years for a bachelor's degree in Ireland. Um, we have a, a system called uh, the National Framework where we do it by levels. So level five is like high school. OK, so finishing out high school and graduating from high school level seven is an ordinary degree, which is generally three years. And then level eight is a four years honors degree. So we don't have too many three year honor degree programs. And I see there's a link after or there's a reply in there. OK, it was just Molly typing back. There you go. And um, so hopefully that's been really helpful, guys um, and girls and everybody on the, on the call. Um. If anybody has any other questions, please do feel free. Or maybe we do have to jump at this stage. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that was fantastic. Thanks very much, Neve. Of course, if any questions come through, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, but as we're sort of wrapping up this session, just wanted to let everybody know that we've got another 50 minutes. So you've got 50 minutes to get out there and have a direct chat with all the uh, the various colleges and universities. And, you know, this is your chance to have a one on one session. You know, all the reps out there are incredibly knowledgeable, as is Neve. And uh, and if there's any more questions, Neve, that you wanted to jump in or any final comments? Anybody? I'm going to go back over to the university boot, to the University of Limerick boot. If you want to stop by, ask me some questions, please do. If um, Rowan, if anybody does reach out to me on the booth, is it okay for me to connect you guys by email if they do want to want to chat oh, with you? Of course, Fantastic. absolutely. So if anybody wants to chat to Rowan one on one about her time in Ireland and get that that real honest opinion without you know the university head here kind of half watching going hmm, um, no, not really. Um, we're all about honesty. I, I love when Rowan gives it tells me when there's something wrong as well. So <laughs> if you do want to connect, more than happy to do it. Terrific. And thanks very much, Rowan. It's great to hear your story. I listened to oh, it thanks. in the background. Um, anyway, well, I think we'll call it an end. And thanks very much, Neve. Thanks, Rowan. And everybody, we've got 50 more, well, running up to 45 minutes now. So get out there and get those conversations in. And uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Rowan. See you later.